Hello my friends and welcome back to the rabbit hole. Oh, today's video is going to be so much fun. We've got a big haul today. We've got skincare, we've got makeup. We brought back the pink wig. Oh my gosh. I was looking at my wig collection this morning thinking, what? why have I not been wearing this one? It's one of my favorite, it's hot. It is hot, that's, that's the reason. But it is October, it's October. I'm almost out of time for doing Halloween type of looks. What have I been doing? So if you're new to this channel, the way I do my hauls is I only haul products that I've been trying. So really it's more of a video of speed reviews. Also, I came to this horrible realization that while this system sounds helpful, sometimes I forget to haul products. So you're actually gonna see in the next two videos in the big year in skincare series, we're gonna do toner and essence. And some of the products in that video I've, I've never hauled. Which is all to tell you that today's video goes back a, a lot. It, it kind of goes back a lot, but uh, hopefully it's helpful. It's basically a, a skincare routine and a makeup routine. And as always, there are timestamps in the description box to both the makeup and the skincare section. Feel free to watch whatever interests you and skip whatever doesn't. So let's just actually kind of go through this as a skincare routine, starting with our cleansing oil. So wait, let me tell you how this came to be. So I posted my cleansing balms video and I had a lot of people asking me, are you gonna do one for cleansing oil? No, it's not scheduled because I've actually only tried a small handful of cleansing oils. Yes, that video is what, 30 cleansing balms? It's kind of a lot, it's kind of a lot. And how many cleansing oils have I tried? Three? <laughs> So I realized, oh my gosh, this is a, a flaw if I wanna have a skincare channel. So I went out and bought from <laughs> a company that I, I love their cleansing balm. This is the Elemis Nourishing Omega Rich Cleansing Oil. And I do think it is a well done cleansing oil. It is delightful to use. It has a nice citrus smell to it. It is very effective at removing almost all of your makeup. The only thing that you may run into trouble with with either a cleansing balm or a cleansing oil is if you wear uh, the eyeshadows that stain your lids, you may have trouble removing the stains. However, I feel like I immediately remembered why I don't have a big cleansing oil collection. It's personal preference, it's personal preference. When I spray this into my hands, I gotta play the game of whoa, 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 whoa. That's why I like cleansing balms more, it tends to hold its shape a little better and it's just easier to work with, that's it. So that said, I don't know if it's really worth it for me to continue to explore cleansing oil. I actually think it might just be more helpful for those of you who are really big cleansing oil fans to share in the comments below, what cleansing oils do you love? Because if you love that category, you're gonna be more helpful for other people who also love that category. That makes sense, right? I, I feel like it's kind of important for uh, content creators to recognize what our limitations are. You know, for me, I'm not that big of a fan of cleansing oils, not that strong of a nose. That's something I learned only from reading comments, from reading all of your feedback on what was strong and what wasn't. That's when I started going, oh, is, is my nose kind of weak? <laughs> And then we have an empty box, which is a story. It's a story. So I bought from the e.l.f. Mint Collection, which at this point, again, has been around for a while. This was the mint cleanser. I used it once. I used it once, and I determined it wasn't for me. I actually, I had high hopes because it's a foaming cleanser. It's the fun type of foaming cleanser where it, it spurts out foam into your hand, but I do not like the smell of mint. But as I was using this for the first and only time, I was sitting there, standing there really, thinking, I do know someone who does like mint. So I go to my partner and I'm like, I think you gotta try this. I know you love mint. I think you haven't tried a foaming cleanser, but I have a feeling you'll really like this one. Uh, she used it once and she said, can I have it? <laughs> I'm like, please, please do me a favor and take this cleanser. It's just so funny for you. It's so funny how big of a role personal preference plays. Now, all that said, I don't think that this is a product I would have highly recommended. It does contain, probably obviously, some peppermint ingredients. And also, although I do have a drier skin type, it was a little bit more drying on me than I would have preferred. She liked it though. She actually really liked that uh, clean feeling. In general, I would tell you to look for cleansers that are very gentle in the way they cleanse, but I can't, 
I can't even criticize her because her skin looks amazing. It looks amazing. I think that all of us who are really into skincare, we all relate to this. You know how you have those people in your life who wash their face with shampoo and yet they, they look amazing. And here we are spending lots of money on skincare products, trying to get our skin in a better place. And it's, it's a struggle. I love genetics. So then we have the Saturday Skin Rub-A-Dub Peeling Gel. Saturday Skin sent me a few items in PR. I've actually really liked this brand. I liked what they stood for from the very beginning. They came onto the skincare market with this incredible blend of peptides before peptides were trending. And I do mean an incredible blend. It's a long list of peptides. It's not the, the peptide complex a lot of brands like to claim where it's one single peptide. So we did talk about peeling gels in the cleansers video. Typically it's not my absolute favorite category, but I gotta say this one actually it did surprise me. It didn't uh, give me the same amount of that balling up on my skin as some other peeling gels. And yet, when I washed my skin, when I washed this off my skin, I really felt like my skin was a lot smoother. They're highlighting the enzyme ingredients. Again, we talked about this in the cleansers video too. Anecdotally, a lot of people see results from using enzyme-based cleansers and self-included, self very much included. I think that Saturday Skin's mistake, or not really a mistake, but more of just what coincidentally happened is that when they first came to Sephora, they were using fragrance in their products products and uh, you know this product right here does have some essential oil ingredients and it was just the wrong time that was exactly when the skincare community as a whole decided to move away from fragrance and essential oils but I do have some exciting news much like a lot of brands out there Saturday skin has also started to formulate their products now without fragrance and without essential oils so this is the yuzu vitamin c bright eye cream i had tried their other eye cream in the past and it was okay i think it just wasn't the perfect match for my skin type very simply but this one oh my goodness this one is for dry skin types it is so thick and so creamy and it's really not that expensive for a product that has again that rich blend of peptides yuzu which is a great source of vitamin c it doesn't really have a citrus scent, so I'm assuming it's not super high in yuzu, but they also add in 3-O-ethyl ascorbic acid, which is a vitamin C derivative, a very smart choice for an eye cream. So it's, it's very well made. The eye cream has been out for a little while. This was a new announcement from them, the Carrot and Niacinamide Moisturizing Cream. If you happen to have tried the eye cream and you like that thick texture, that's what you get in this moisturizer. This is very rich in hydrating ingredients. Squalene is actually the second ingredient in this formula. High in niacinamide also contains that peptide blend, contains ceramides. It is really a lovely product. This is also glass packaging, by the way. I'll mention this again in what's new in skincare coming next week. I really think their, their new direction is amazing. I received a, a couple of products in PR from Fresh. This is the Black Tea Firming Eye Serum. For me, this was that very rare situation where your expectation and your reality perfectly align. It's a fresh product, it's a little more expensive, so I expect it to feel fancy, to be cosmetically elegant, and also I expected it to be very hydrating on my under eye area. And it was exactly that. It's rich in antioxidants, hydrating ingredients. It does contain fragrance. But again, you know, I think that this, you know how we're doing that ranking series? This is another one of those products that is, it is a splurge. It's not pretending to not be a splurge. It is what it is. They also sent over the Black Tea Instant Perfecting Mask. This is a wash-off hydrating mask. Now, I've typically said I'm not really the biggest fan of those types of products in general, so I didn't have very high expectations of this. I will say it's fresh, so they made it really feel like quite a nice experience. What surprised me is that when I washed this off after 10 minutes, my skin actually did feel softer. And frankly, I am really surprised as to why that is the result that I got from this. So we have sake as the third ingredient, which is indeed very interesting. Of course, that's the uh, ingredient that makes SK2 so well loved. We also have other antioxidant rich ingredients. We have oat in here. We do have fermented ingredients. So, you know, it certainly lives up to 
to the black tea name. But I'm just, I'm so surprised that a product that doesn't have AHA nor enzymes left my skin feeling so soft. I know that back when I did uh, my mask declutter, I was surprised by how many of you said, you know, I didn't think that wash off masks did anything for me either until I found the right one for me. I think it just could be that situation. Yeah, I'm actually, I'm actually left really surprised by this one because the reality is I would not have bought this for myself. So thanks for sending it over fresh. I wouldn't have, I would have bought the, and I have used the overnight one. I actually really enjoy that one, but I just, I would have had zero expectations from this. And yet in actually using it with advanced antioxidants, smooths and instantly softens, it, it did. And we also have some Korean skincare and indie brands. Let's actually, let's do the indie brands first. So I made another Stradia purchase. I bought the Fortify oil, which some of you were just absolutely raving, raving about. And y'all talk me into products. Y'all talk me into products all the time. So this is a product that is rich in tamanu oil, which we've talked about kind of a lot. It's a great anti-inflammatory ingredient. You know how I said my nose is kind of weak? Okay, so here's the thing. <laughs> I know at least some of you know where I'm going with this one. So, as mentioned, my nose is not incredibly strong. So, I was thinking, okay, it's fine. Now, I admit to you, when I initially got this in the mail, my order was delivered, I go to grab it, I immediately try this on. We are not wasting any time. It had been in the <laughs> hot sun. I did absolutely notice, ooh, that smells really strong. So potentially my product got a, a little cooked. It may have gotten, you know, a little bit of extra roasting to it. But yeah, even, even I noticed how strong the smell was in this one. But I was thinking I'm gonna push through it. I love the results from Tamanu oil that has consistently been a favorite ingredient for me. So one night, I slather this all over my face, I go lay down, and my partner turns over to look at me, and she goes, why does your face smell like Thanksgiving dinner? I don't know how her nose does it. It's, yeah, it's kind of, you know, you know if you have Thanksgiving dinner and you smoke your turkey, it's got a bit of a smoky smell. You can almost smell the potatoes and the, the gravy sitting next to it. Wasn't there, oh my gosh, wasn't there some kind of a soda that came out a while ago that was Thanksgiving dinner? Am I imagining this? I don't think I am. Hold on. I'm right. I'm right. It was Jones Soda. Thanksgiving dinner soda. This article says, as if the annual holiday fruitcake wasn't already unappealing. Does anyone actually make fruitcake anymore? In 2004, Jones Soda found a way to make it even grosser. If your heart is broken that you missed the Jones Thanksgiving dinner soda, you can get the next best thing, a Thanksgiving dinner oil. No, I'm actually, I actually really like this. I mean, in terms of results, it's incredible. Stinky skincare is very often phenomenal for results. I will also add the company suggests that if the smell is too much for you, you can put it in your refrigerator and I can confirm that that does help with taking the edge off of that smell. But yeah, you know, Tamanu oil, it has a particular smell and in this blend, it's a little bit, well, it's a little bit Thanksgiving-like. There are a few products that Ari cannot stand the smell of on my skin. It's so funny because my nose is weak. I'm always trying to slip them by her. I'm like, if she doesn't see me apply, she'll never know. No, nope, every time, every single time. This, this is the difference between a weak and a strong nose. <laughs> And then we have some products from Chiasm Skin. This was a very kind gift from a subscriber. Just, I wanna say something really quickly on subscriber gifts. If you ever try to send me a gift, just know in advance, I will try to talk you out of it. I feel like this is such a tricky topic. You know, we often say in our videos, not just me, but lots of content creators say things like, well, oh, I'm thinking about buying this product, but I'm a little on the fence. And people often leap to the assumption that we're kind of asking for it from companies or subscribers. I can confirm only my experience, but that is absolutely not what I am doing when I say things like that, not at all. I am fishing for something and that is for input. I wanna know if I should buy this or if I'm gonna 
waste both my money and time buying a product, it takes a while to make a video and I, I really, <laughs> I hate to do reviews and then, you know, nobody was actually interested in it. That's why input is so helpful. It is so helpful when people comment on what they're interested in, what they would like to see reviewed because, you know, again, I, I think people don't know. My What's New in Skincare series, every single video Every one I've ever done in that, I wake up early on Saturday, about seven in the morning, and I hit schedule on that video at 11 or 12 at night. On the other hand, if you really want me to try something, if you really want me to review something and you don't feel guilted into it, that's okay, but I'm gonna make sure you don't feel guilt because I never want you to feel like you owe me anything. So I got to admit, it's a brand that I probably wouldn't have purchased from just because of review constraints, but I'm so, oh my gosh, I'm so glad I tried this. What an adorable brand. They are a brand that combines philosophy and skincare. Um, you still my beating heart. But the whole idea behind this brand is that uh, we experience the world through our skin. So they're actually, the products are really, really beautiful products. They are not essential oil free. In fact, I would argue they're using essential oils that may benefit your skin. For example, the one I'm holding right here, the Horizon Calming Oil, rich in blue tansy, which is one of my absolute favorite essential oil ingredients. We have prickly pear, cloudberry, squalene, hibiscus, willow bark, spirulina, green tea, honeysuckle, blue tansy, and more chamomile and lavender of course the calming oil is pr well maybe my personal favorite it is such a beautiful oil I always say I always say indie oils are some of the best oils out there and you know again if you are uh, on the fence about indie brands I do understand that with certain actives in particular but when it comes to oils it's not actually per se a difficult formulation. Instead, it's that indie brands want to do a, a really good job of sourcing their ingredients. And know that you may not always get that from some of the bigger brands who, rather than necessarily looking at the quality of the oils they're buying, they may be looking for the best value. Now, apparently this is a newer product from Chiasm. This is the Twilight Retinol Boost. I didn't try this one until recently because I was using the Geek and Gorgeous Retinaldehyde. This is 0.5% retinol, but it's blended with blue tansy. You know what this, you know what this product is? Are you familiar with Sunday Riley's Luna? This is so much like Luna, but in my personal opinion, better. Not only just because it's not Sunday Riley, which seems to just constantly be a brand that has some amount of drama around it. So much of the skincare community is drama free. And then there's Sunday Riley. <laughs> but not just that, instead, this is actually using retinol. You know, my, my critique with Luna and with any product that contains hydroxypinacolone retinoate is we still have not seen a good body of literature behind that ingredient to suggest that it actually is superior to retinol. We have the research on retinol. So this product, instead of HPR and blue tansy, is 0.5% retinol and blue tansy. Okay, let me not get so hung up on just the blue tansy, although that is one of my favorite ingredients. It's actually a base of pomegranate and rosehip oil with hibiscus, plum, encapsulated retinol in here, which is why it's okay for it to be in glass packaging. They added ceramides. I mean, it's so rich in antioxidant ingredients. This is absolutely lovely. They say that you can mix this into your moisturizer, which again makes sense because we're talking about encapsulated retinol, or you can just apply it as an oil. It is, it is lovely. And in Korean skincare, did I say in this video that I listen to your feedback? I think I already did. So the next product, the Real Barrier Extreme Cream. Oh my goodness, so many of you have commented. You have to try this, Alice. So I saw this on Octoly, which is a PR website. So this was gifted by the brand and I tried it and <laughs> Every one of you that said you have to try this, y'all all have dry skin. I now know that for a fact. What a nourishing moisturizer. Oh my goodness. It is absolutely in that same category as Stradia Liquid Gold, as the CRS Deep in a Barrier Cream. We had to find the right brain drawer. You know what I'm talking about? And 
it's cosmetically elegant. You know, that is, that is rare. That is hard to find. Thick, nourishing, and cosmetically elegant. It is very well done. We have a very rich base here. We do have fatty alcohols. We have panthenol. Multiple peptide ingredients, medecasoside, which is the active portion of Sika. We also do have some scent ingredients, so do note that although this product doesn't contain fragrance, it does have some essential oil-based ingredients, including sage. That gives it an earthy smell to me. I have not received any comments on this one yet from my partner, so I guess that's a good sign. Then again, she tends to like earthy smells, just not Thanksgiving dinner smells. But yeah, another product that is made to strengthen your moisture barrier. Thank you all so much to those of you who did recommend this because you were right about it being right up my alley. We have a little bit of makeup for this video. Should we, let's actually, let me update you on the products I had used in that video. The Joa Crystal Glow Primedation All-in-One Foundation. Whoa, this blew me away in that video. I'm wearing it again today. I've been wearing this a lot because it is so easy, so easy to apply and it looks lovely. But there is one trick for you. In that video, you see me apply it over a very humectant rich sunscreen. You definitely want to apply it over, just do it over a sunscreen. That's the best life advice. I say this because one evening we had to run to the grocery store and I wasn't wearing foundation already. So I was like, okay, I'm just gonna throw some foundation on. It's eight o'clock at night. No need to retouch my sunscreen. But uh, yeah, it didn't glide on too nicely. So I think it, it does need a nice moisturized base. But you know, you should be wearing your sunscreen through the day. If you're putting this on at night, put some kind of a nice primer on under it. But it is beautiful. Is it just me? or are drugstore brands knocking it out of the park in 2021? I genuinely think that some of the products I've tried from drugstore brands have actually been better than high-end products. I'll also really quickly mention the Lauren Conrad set that I purchased. So the set was the price of the eyeliner, but it was 50% off, so it felt like such a win to me. And I'd heard great things about the eyeliner. I'm ultimately gonna tell you I'm not actually super sure why. Don't get me wrong, it's a nice eyeliner, but I feel like I'm not quite seeing the hype. It's good, it gets the job done, it draws a dark line, it lasts all day, but I think, you know what I think it is? That McQueen eyeliner, that's become my new gold standard because it's so affordable. It's a Korean skincare brand, so affordable and does everything this one does for an absolute fraction of the price. What I've seen that for about $4. This is 20. Once again, confirming what I was saying about drugstore products. The set also came with a mini of her The Mascara. For once, it's a product name that isn't actually, you know, going on for nine more sentences. You know what this mascara is? It's fine. Is it just me or do you feel like most mascara is fine? I have dry skin, so some amount of mascara, maybe 20% maybe of mascara smudges and runs on me. And that's always surprising since I have dry skin. It's typically not a huge problem for me. And then, you know, maybe two to three percent of mascaras I try blow my mind. The vast majority of mascara on the market is just best summarized with the word fine. It's, it's fine. It's fine. I will really quickly mention the Natasha Denona Love Palette because it went 50% off and it sold out very quickly, so most likely you will not be able to purchase this. I did post it to my Instagram though, so hopefully you got it if you were interested. I'll leave my handle somewhere on the screen. We have not had a lot of good deals lately. That's why I haven't had too many sale posts for you. I'm glad I bought this because I always go back and forth with Natasha Denona. I don't like the price of Natasha Denona's huge palettes. This one was one of the $65 palettes originally, which is a lot more reasonable. I will say she has really pretty shimmers. Her mattes are also, they're fine. I really don't have any complaints with this palette. I don't know if I would feel that way if I paid 65, but at 32.50, yeah, I have no complaints. My gripe is those huge $128 palettes. I don't know how Natasha Denona does it, but she's managed to talk people into buying a Costco-sized amount of eyeshadow. It's just so much more than you can possibly 
use, you cannot finish. How, how many eyeshadow palettes have you finished? In fact, what makeup products do you finish? I, I can actually tell you what I finish. In order, number one, concealer. I go through a fair amount of concealer. Number two, brow products. Those might be tied, actually. So it's always amazing to me that Natasha Denona has been able, is it really even Natasha Denona talking people into buying Natasha Denona products? It might be that I've seen certain influencers say things like, okay, I know the price is high, but the price per ounce is actually a good deal. Yeah, but it's only a good deal if you actually are finishing products. And I've, I've, I've never in my life finished an eyeshadow palette. I think you have to be a project panner to finish an eyeshadow palette because you'd have to use the shades that you didn't necessarily love. There's always shades in eyeshadow palettes that I don't love. But hey, listen, she started coming out with these smaller size palettes. And you know, I, I do respect that. It's much more reasonably sized. And uh, if you do more at 50% off, I'll, I'll probably buy them. I'll probably buy them. And our final speed reviews for this video are on the two little e.l.f. bite size palettes from their mint collection. I bought them both. I bought mint to be as well as chocolate mint. And you know what's funny about this? It's kind of a, a hit and a miss for me. One hit, one miss. It's so bizarre when that happens. I feel like that sometimes happens with products in the exact same line. You wouldn't think that the formulas would feel different, but lo and behold, they do. So I actually really like the mint to be eyeshadow palette, which is the one I'm wearing today. It has this beautiful uh, gray shade, which almost has a bit of a green to it, a seafoam green color, this silvery green color, and then that beautiful true green. Oh, it's gorgeous. It's easy to work with. I, I like this one. I, I don't know what happened with chocolate mint. I don't like these two mattes. They don't blend well. They take way too long. And we live in a world with way too many good options for matte eyeshadow to spend 10 minutes blending one eyeshadow in your look. These shimmers are okay, but they're not anything spectacular. Yeah, I don't, I don't know how we have such a hit and a miss in the same collection. I will actually still tell you that overall, the old bite size palettes, I have a jalapeno and What's the rose one called? I would actually still say those might be a little bit of a better formula than this one, so I don't know what they changed, but this is still good. It's just that most of the bite size palettes have such a phenomenal formula. Just in case you haven't tried those yet, it is, it, it's shocking how easy to work with and how pigmented and beautiful those are. Uh, so yeah, I, I don't know why these are a little different, but again, I like one and I, I don't like the other. <laughs> but that's it, my friends. That's what we have for my October haul. I did buy the Tower 28 sunscreen. I've been waiting for it for over a week. I don't know what's going on with Sephora's shipping, but hopefully we have a review on that coming next week, which I hope you all are interested in because I really want to do it. I, I really want to do that video. But that's it. If you all enjoyed today's video, please do me a favor and make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. Thanks for watching. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your weekend and I will see you all next time.